You guys love reliving the invention of the Greek and Roman alphabets like it's some climax in the history of writing. But real language nerds drool over Korean, and here's why. Another time, another king. This time in a Korean palace. He presents himself as King Sejong. As you get a grip on your surroundings, you begin to tell him of your journeys. Yet, with a sweeping gaze, the king looks right past you. You've been out for a very long time. Over a thousand years. The world has come so far, and the scripts you once knew have too. He reminds you of the old Chinese logographs and sound meaning combinations. Those are still useful to his court, to a point. You see, Chinese has these nice word units one after another, but Korean, he boasts, has these elegantly complex words with different pieces and endings. Fitting Chinese writing to Korean grammar hasn't been easy. He tells you of a people across the sea who've gone through a similar struggle. The Japanese simplified Chinese characters by turning them into a fixed syllabary, which they now use alongside the Chinese characters. So they have these syllable characters and these thousands of Han characters. They use the Han characters for the meaning-heavy components, the vocabulary terms. Then they use the syllabary to write little grammatical words and word pieces, or new vocabulary words, that don't historically have their own Chinese logograph. Such a complicated system, gentlemen. The king has an almost puzzled look, like he's holding back a punchline. He recounts how in old Japan, women wrote entire books using only the syllable characters, because writing with the traditional Han characters was seen as the masculine thing to do. But he knows of another land. He's heard exotic tales of the West, where people write out all of their sounds logically. He pauses. He can't quite grasp this himself. You snicker as you think back on how you saw the alphabet develop with your own eyes in your journeys. You would know. So you sit down and show him how to write every vowel and consonant with the alphabet. A couple dozen shapes, and you can write any sound. You smile and think, so simple. But he lets out an unimpressed sigh. Why do all the characters look so different, so haphazard? I mean, you make f and v by putting your bottom lip against your top teeth. The only difference is that your throat vibrates when you say v. He quizzes you. Why do you write f and v? And he goes on, interrogating you. What about b? Why does it look that way when it's just taking the v sound and saying it through smacked lips? Seems you underestimated the king. He doesn't want any old alphabet. He wants a writing system that shows the various features of sounds. That the sound is made in your throat, against your teeth, made with your lips, and so on. He puts his brightest scholars to work, giving them the humble name of the Hall of Worthies. In go the experts, and out comes another MAJOR MOMENTS IN THE HISTORY OF WRITING. They develop Korean Hangul, a featural alphabet. Every syllable gets separated out into its own block. The syllables, consonants, and vowels will be written side by side within that block. Each consonant and vowel letter inside that block will be shaped according to its features. So here are the consonants that get pronounced with the lips. See the similar lip shape? Here's ga and here's ka. Again, similar sounds, similar shape. The featural alphabet was so simple and straightforward that one of the king's historians almost dared people to learn it. If you're smart, you can learn it in one morning. If you're a fool, it'll take you 10 days. Not everyone's jumping on the Hangul easy train. Community accessible writing bothers traditionalists who skip out on the innovation and keep using Chinese characters fitted to Korean, Hanja or Han characters even into the 1900s. Still, for the rest, writing is easier than ever. It has its first rock star. It even gets its own holiday. Oh, writing, you've come a long, long way from pictographs in a cave.